Hey there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walter's World, and today we just have a little Friday Live to answer your travel questions, getting ready for summer travel in 2022, though lots of places in the U.S. we don't quite have that summer weather feeling quite yet, or even springtime weather. We're getting a little winter weather where I'm at. It's a little chilly. But since it's a Friday afternoon, I thought it would be nice if we just hopped on. And hey, Michael, traveling the world. Good to see you. Hello. Ooh. Hello, hello. So I thought we'd go through some things. And I want to, I mean, I, I, I'm rehashing a lot of stuff. I've done the early parts of our lives lately because I think, ooh, currently in Iceland. Nice, Elliot. Awesome. Vinny, good to see you. Thanks for being a member. We appreciate it. Corbin, hi to Aaron. All the best. All the best. Uh, let's see. Some things I really want you to realize is wherever you're going to go, if you're going to be traveling internationally, make sure you're staying up to date on what requirements are there. Some places you don't have to test before you go. Some places you do have to test. Some places you have to test before you come back home. Sometimes you don't have to test before you come back home. It all depends where you're coming from and where you're going. And the best thing that I can say is really, if you're looking to figure it out, what you need to do, if you're a U.S. citizen, go to the U.S. State Department website for their travel safety updates um, and look for your country or the country you're going to go to, look up the embassy of your country in that country. So if I'm going to go to Italy, I would look up the U.S. Embassy in Italy, and then they'll give you the, the what you need to know about going to a place, you know, with the COVID restrictions and stuff like that. And do realize that there are still lots of countries that are on level four or level three that are saying, don't travel at all, but you can still travel there just because COVID's been there. And so something you got to think about. But overall, I'm excited to travel again. For those who don't know, Jocelyn has been in Greece the last two weeks, and she is about an hour away from getting home. So I'm just on here for about 59 minutes until she gets here in case there's any last minute cleaning I have to do, which I just remembered I have all of the kids' clothes washed, but they're all piled up in the hallway, but all my clothes are away. So I might have to cut this at 55 minutes to make sure that I get those out of the way when she comes. So anyway, um, but I, what I want to do today is just answer some of your questions, see what's going on, see where you're going. I know our summer travels started already. Jocelyn has been in Greece. We got France, Germany, Switzerland coming up. Uh, we've got Spain and Italy to film, and we're going to be there for a while. We got a wedding to go to in Italy, which should be fun. So hopefully, I'll make maybe like a don't Italian weddings. So uh, don't think the Italian wedding suit that you have in the U.S. is actually a wedding suit you have in Italy all the time. Just letting you know, because when I have my Italian friends here, I go, "Did you have this at a wedding?" They're like, "No." I'm like, "Okay, good to know. Good to know." Oh, Sarah is heading to Jamaica tomorrow. Very nice, very nice. I love it, I love it. Honor, good to see you, man. Hey, Emperor Mark, hello, <laughs> Emperor Honor. I'm planning a trip to Istanbul and then to Italy. Do you have any tips for the route from Rome to North Italy and San Marino? Okay, so if you're gonna go from Rome to San Marino, if you wanna go, you're not gonna go North Italy first. You're gonna go Rome and then you're gonna San Marino. You're gonna go, you're probably gonna take trains or buses to Rimini. And Rimini is like a beach, popular beach town, but that's right by San Marino. A lot of people do a day trip when they're staying at the beaches of Rimini. They go up into San Marino um, for the day or two. You know, it's, it's a nice thing to do. I take my students there. They really enjoyed it. Uh, but it's like a day or two in San Marino. What's really nice is just a little, about an hour farther north from Rimini and San Marino, you got Ravenna. Ravenna was a Byzantine town. And so there's Byzantine churches from the year like 500, not 1500. 500. That's really kind of a cool place to go. So I would recommend one of those things. Michael's going to the UK, France, Swiss, Italy in September. Awesome. Hey, good time for your wallet too, because that's a lot cheaper than going in July and August. So that is awesome to see. Zabnik, do I recommend New Orleans in the summer? Depends. Are you a bit like me and you like to sweat and melt? July and August can be quite, um, quite hot and quite humid. Uh, in New Orleans at that time. I've gone those times. I prefer like now. Um, actually, I usually go February, January. It's not cool. Um, it's not cold, but it's not hot. But uh, that's when I usually go. Sorry, I just got a text for, about Liam. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, so that would be one thing. I, I do like it. Oh, Teresa's going to New Orleans as well. Yeah. No, New Orleans is one of my favorite things. Like, if you're looking for a, a guy's trip or a girl's trip or a friend's trip or a couple's trip, that's a place that, though it has the reputation of just partying on the, in the French Quarter, 
there's actually tons of history. There's tons of museums. There's tons of culture. There's tons of amazing food when you go there. So you got a lot of times there. So the first trip to Germany is going to be, uh, we're going to be in Freiburg and down about in that southwest corner of Germany. So we're going to be down there. We've been crossing back and forth from Strasbourg, Colmar, Basel. So we're doing a bunch of things right down there in that kind of Ecke, as the Germans would say, that corner. So uh, we'll be doing there some of those. Yes, we still need a negative code to test within 24 hours to get back into the U.S. One thing I recommend, if you are a U.S. traveler going abroad, um, what I would recommend is talk to your hotel where you're going to be staying the last day or two you're there before you go and ask them, can they help you set up things? I know where my, my mom and I are going uh, in France and Paris, they already have it set up. They're like, yes, we will get it set up for you, the testing stuff for you. They get it all set up for you. Jocelyn, the hotel they that she stayed at, they got it all set up for her. So her and her friend Sandra eat yesterday and got their tests and everything so then they could come. So be good to go. There's my traveling buddy, Mark Finley, from Escaping the Empty Nest, France, Germany, Austria, and Italy on the 11th, arriving on the 12th. Hopefully. Hopefully, my friend. Hopefully. Um, yeah, so we got that. Oh, so many. It's so nice to like just hop on some of these times and get some to get some nice questions and get some stuff on here. Because uh, when I try to plan them, something usually happens and I can't do it. So I'm just like, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to hop on for a bit. Matthew, thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, well done on the, the cleaning mark. Bonus points for you. I'm headed to Madrid next Friday. Any tips? Thanks, Matt. So I have a shocks of Madrid, but my don'ts of Madrid video have been sitting. It's been sitting in my, I've got to find the text and I got to get the B roll together. Um, I would say the Prado Museum, it depends. If you like more modernish contemporary arts, the Reina Sofia, but if you like the, 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 the Rubens kind of stuff, then you want to go to Prado. The, the museums, they're all right there. It's really great. Good day trip, good easy day trip, either Toledo or Segovia. Segovia is less walking. Um, and oh, you get the suckling pigments there. Oh, it's so good. So good. I actually have a video on Segovia to give you some tips on that. Um, I, I don't know where you're going to be staying, but it's pretty easy to get around. The metro goes out to the airport too, so you're pretty pretty well set up. I mean, I like Madrid enough. I've taken students there twice, um, so you know if I'm taking a student group to a place, I got to feel comfortable in it. So that's that's a good place to go, my friend. Good job. Ah, oh, Corbin's going to the Dakotas. Nice. Oh, Esther. Hey, taking advantage of summer Fridays and doing long weekends in New England. Any suggestions for easy drive from New York City? Okay, Esther, so there's a lot of places you could go. Um, one, uh, the Berkshires, or Berkshires, and Western Massachusetts. There's a bunch of tiny towns that go through there. Really really beautiful. If you ever remember an old artist, um, Norman Rockwell, his, in the Berkshires, his, his uh, retreats there. And you, they actually moved from, from the town out to this place where he liked to paint. They moved his workshop, and you go visit that, and there's a museum of his work there. That's cool. But, like, North Adams is nice to stay. I, I, we had better luck getting hotels there. So that's one nice one. Um, if you're going up, you get Mystic, Connecticut. You have the Mystic Pizza with Julie Roberts from 30 years ago. Uh, but the Mystic Seaports, an old seaport, they've redone. So you see what it was like in the 1800s. Some good food there as well, so you can stop on there. Uh, if you're going up, obviously, well, Boston is Boston. I don't tell you that one. But if you're going to go, just keep going. If you're going up, if you go, oh, I can't remember the name of the town. There's there's these two towns right on the other side of, in the southern part of Vermont, New Hampshire, right kind of across from each other. You can do both of those. They're both kind of cute towns to go see. But I can't think of them off the top of my head. And I'm I'm going there in July, and I can't remember their names. So they're, they're, if you look on the map, you'll see there's two decent-sized towns that are there. But for me, the best New England place to go is along the coast uh, in Maine and hitting Acadia National Park when you're there. So uh, that would be something for me. That's something I would point out. Let's see. Miles K., good to see you. Hey, Miles. Miles says, I'm trying to decide where to take my kids, 13 and 16 this summer. Oh, bless your heart, man. Bless your heart. I'm thinking about San Francisco, Atlanta, or Austin. What do you think? Um, how if you're, how long are you gonna go for it? Like, if you're just gonna go for like a weekend, um, Austin, Atlanta. I I probably go. I mean, it depends where you are with the kids. I I do Austin or Atlanta. San Francisco got some cool stuff too. It's it's good for a few days as well. But when you're going to San Francisco, you want to go to the wineries and stuff that's out in Napa and that kind of. Not well, you can do that with the kids. I'm 16; they can drive for you. But they can't drive a rental car. So I don't know if you're driving out there. Um, actually, 
if you're going to go to Atlanta, you're just going to Uber everywhere you go and it makes life so much easier. I know it sounds silly, but the, the Georgia Aquarium is fantastic. College Football Hall of Fame is right by there. World of Coca-Cola is right by there. This is all right in one area, right, right, right downtown while at the Olympic Park or Centennial Park. Um, there's a couple, like our dunce of Atlanta vi move video, we got some of the museums there. There's a green beltway to go to. There's some crazy neighborhoods to go to. I like that. Austin, Austin is easy because you got the downtown and there's a bunch of music joints on one of the streets you can go see. And I think even the kids can listen during the day. And then you've got some stuff outside of Austin. You can go check out San Antonio. It's like a two hour drive. I don't have to drive. You rent a car. I, pretty much every time I'm going to Austin or San Antonio, we rented a car and going to the other one. Uh, so you have that. So I would go with one of those two. Um, and actually what you, what I would do is I'd recommend, I'd ask your kids, Hey, you, you, you guys decide uh, where we're going to go. Cause then they have buy-in. So they can't be like that teenage. I don't want to go. You're like, you chose it. So that could help there too. So head, heading to DC, Michael Trapp in the world, heading to DC first week of June requested tours already. If I don't get it, which museums do you like other than air and space and the art gallery? Uh, the Native Indian, it was the Native American Museum. The, yeah, the Native American Museum, um, which is down toward the Capitol. That, it's a smaller one, but I thought that was really good. That was a really good one. Uh, Museum of American Culture was really good. Uh, those are two ones that I recommend the most, If you, but, and those are free. If you're going to go to something to pay, go to the Spy Museum. Um, I have, I just put out a bunch of DC videos, a DC budgeting, like no one watched it, but there's like tis for seeing DC cheap. Uh, shocks of DC. We have an old don'ts of DC. We've got needs of DC on my channel and Jocelyn's channel. Uh, so, so there's some stuff there. Um, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully that can give you some ideas. Let's see. Lori's got the perfect little Central European itinerary. This is what I recommend to a lot of people. Vienna, Munich, Nuremberg, Regensburg, Prague, Budapest, Naples, Rome, Florence, Bologna. That's a long, that's a great trip um, in different order. Like one of the things I usually tell a lot of people, they're like, I want to see some Germany. I want to see some Central. It's like you fly into Berlin, you go down to Dresden, then you go to Prague, you stop some places in the Czech, then you come down into Vienna, you got Bratislava across the way, and then you can go to Budapest or you break and you go from Prague to Munich to Salzburg over to Vienna and doing that. And then you can come back. Um, I'm not sure you're going to like come back through, but all those are connected by trains, so it's relatively easy. You also fly to places, but a lot of those, it's just easier to take the train because it's faster. So so Chuck, do you know the verification process? Crews use to verify COVID vaccines. Basically, uh, you, you have your card, and they look at it, and they check it that way. Um, if you look at um, La Lido Loca, Lido Loca, Lido Loco, uh, yeah, it's a buddy of mine. He has a channel that's just on cruise news. And so he has stuff he talks about every day. He has cruise updates live sometimes. So he can really answer some questions on that to help you out. K beats Paris in November, my first trip out of North America. That's awesome. They have a fun time. That's a really great, really great first destination to go to. I'm so nice. Let's see. We're taking our own EMED pro proctor test with us. We've used them before and they are so easy. Yeah. And that's just it. You know, your airlines can help you find approved ones that you do. And basically what it is you like, you're filming yourself doing the test and then you send it in. They get, the, you know, they, they, they say, okay, this is the real results. You really did it. You can use that. Um, I know my mom and I, were just going to do one of the brain swabs and they'll let us know. So, you know, I'm going to practice. I'm going to start practicing, picking my news and getting ready for it. So. Ooh, Larry's going to Ireland in October, our eighth trip. Cannot want to see our friends again. Yeah, it is cool when you get a place you go back again and again and see your buds. And Ireland's a fantastic place in October. You know, a lot of people always say Ireland, it's always rainy and dark and stuff. No, I go in October a lot because it's a lot cheaper and we have decent weather most of the time. <laughs> Jim's real. I got lost in Toledo. <laughs> get a map. Yes, Toledo in Spain, you can easily, you're like, where am I? Actually, it's funny, Jim. I was with a friend of mine, Danielle, we did our master's together and her grandma came to visit. And so and we went to Spain together and I was supposed to be the translator. I got so sick that I was coughing up blood, but I'm like, she's paying me to, well, she paid for me to go. So I got to do, so I was like talking and stuff and we're walking around and we end up on the other side of the city and she's, her grandma was not doing well. And I'm like, okay, I forgot about this part. And so we let her chill, get up. We made our way back to the train station and left, got back to Madrid. But, uh, 
Yeah, you could get lost in Toledo. Very easy. Don't worry, Travis. We will have our Pittsburgh video coming. Uh, we should be there in July, end of July this year. So that will probably that'll probably come out. If I'm there at the end of July, it'll probably come out September. I'll probably have it come out for like the, the Steelers first game or something. Ooh, Joseph family's going to New York City. Very nice. Door County, Wisconsin. And, and sorry, Wisconsin. I've been watching a bunch of uh Wisconsin comedians lately, so that's where that came out. Um, yeah, Door County. Yeah, that, that's one of my don'ts of uh, actually I started writing. Where is it? I have the the start of my uh that's don'ts of Midwest. I got that started. Haunted season. US don'ts of Wisconsin. One is uh where was that one? She's got the Culver's, the brandy. Where is it? Because I had one. It was like, oh, yeah, don't miss out on Door County. But don't forget, everyone will ask you if you went to Door County when you go to Wisconsin. We went to a Green Bay Packers game last year. And everyone was like, oh, have you been to Door County? I'm like, I'm here in Green Bay. But if you go to Door County, I'm like, but I'm in Green Bay. And they were like, psychotic. Like, it was pretty funny. <sighs> Ooh, this sounds like fun. Gary, six weeks, Monday, we fly from London to L.A. to do, to do a fly drive that will take us via Tombstone, rather than Vegas, Yellowstone, back to L.A. That's, cool. That's a good trip. That's a cool trip. Jocelyn actually lived down by Tombstone when she, she, excuse me, we were, she was a kid, so we went and visited. Been down there. You have a fun time. Very cool. What's up, Jim and Harriet? Good to see you. Let's see. What up, Lane? Good to see you on here as well. Is three weeks in New York sounding up? Yeah, that's a lot of time in New York. Like, are you going to do New York State? Because New York City, I always feel one city. I mean, you can, if you do like the nomad thing and live there, then you can do three weeks in a place. But I, I usually find like in a city, after you get to about five or six days, you've hit all the main sites, ate all the main food. That's like, I want to kind of explore more. Um, so if you were going to do like the state of New York or around New York, that's plenty of time to see everything. Let's see. Andy, hi, this is Orlando. 10 times from the UK. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of Orlando, my friend. We want to go somewhere different in the States. Would you recommend Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge? Yes, that is a totally different experience. What's cool is you got the Smoky Mountains by there. And you like, like this is like cheesy Americana tourist towns. Okay, like over the top touristy stuff okay but you got dollywood that's there which is an amusement park you can go to if you're going in the summer the smoky mountains uh, you can drive through that beautiful drives beautiful hikes also there's um some brigadier you okay there's also some natural waterfalls that you can like water slides you can go down that's really cool so yeah it'd be fun so airport lounge drive i heard anything on an update of the drop in the negative test before flying back to the u.s the U.S. airlines are pushing for it hard. They're lobbying for it hard. I have not heard anything, but I'm not. I'm not in the know. Um, but I've been looking, and I just know that all the airlines are really like, "Hey, should get people." Because because I know I know dozens of our fans have said, "Look, I don't want to worry. I don't want to take the test in case something happens and I can't come home." I know my dad. He's not. He he's not going to go on our trip with us because he's like, I, "In case something happens, I don't want to get stuck." And she, he freak, He's just kind of freaked out about it. And other people the same way. They're just like. Like, I don't want to take that chance. I, 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 when I want to come home, I want to come home. I don't want something that can stop me from going home. And I still think that's why you're going to have some people holding back from going abroad. Like, we're still going abroad. But, you know, there, there is the, like, I don't think I got it while I was here. I've got my booster. I got all my stuff. But, yeah, so, yeah. Ooh, Chris, I really want to go back to Guatemala and explore some of the ruins. Yeah, Tikal is fantastic. I know – um, so Liam and I have been watching Star Wars like from the beginning, is from the the pre prequels through, and so we were we were watching it on Yavin floor, and, and he's like, "That looks familiar." I'm like, "Yeah, because remember we've been there. That's Tikal. I told you this when we climbed to the top, and you look and you see it is just like in the movie." He's like, "Oh yeah, that's right." Also, Oscar Isaac, uh, he's famous Guatemalan, and that's why he's from Yavin. His podam is from Yavin because that was in Guatemala. So is is uh, pay respects to his family heritage. So, 
Yes, day trip. I thought, yes, day trip from there. Lalita. There it is, Lalita Loca. That's that's the one you're looking for for the cruise stuff, the cruise news. I met him at Vid Summit last year. We had a good time. Oh, Peter's heading out. Greetings from a plane in LAX. Take it off to London. We'll be using the advice from you. It's awesome. Thanks, Peter. And you have a safe flight, safe travels, and have a fun time. I see it. I'm smiling for you. See, I'm so happy to see people who are starting to travel and have fun. It's so nice to see. Yep, Ravana to Bologna to see some of those eggs. Yep, well worth it. So, Crystal, 18 days in France, and that's a really experience. It, yes. I mean, you can't. we can't live there forever, but going that's a good amount of time. Because what I find is when you travel, there, there's different points you get in a trip. Like seven days, you don't feel like good enough. Ten days is usually like people will get a feel. But once you get over two weeks, then some people are like, I want to go back home. And if not everybody in the, the group is on the same page, that can be issues. I know when we used to, because we used to do nine to 13 weeks straight in the summer, or it would be, I would be gone like 13 weeks and the kids would be coming back and stuff. And we do different things. Um, and, or with my family and my, my parents, and we'd always had the planned days. Like I knew there'd be, okay, this is going to be the McDonald's Irish pub watch TV day for my dad. We just do that. And this is going to be the kids day. We're just going to chill out and watch Netflix or we're going to chill out at the park. Yeah, I know we were like last time we were in Paris, we, did, we were there for like two weeks in France and we were kind of going through Paris and I'm like, we're just going to go to the park. Like we just walked down to the park. Kids had a soccer ball. They were playing with the kids that were there. If you watch which video, there's like a Paris video or a France video. And Joss is like poking Liam out of the picture. Like that was at the park. I'm like, oh, go ahead. So I'm like filming stuff and they're doing their thing. So yeah, I, yeah, I think you'll be good. Oh, Color Scream, heading to Egypt end of May. Finally go see the pyramids. That's awesome. That is on my to-do list for sure. Chris B, busy San Francisco next Tuesday. Any advice? So I have not been personally to San Francisco. And if I haven't been to a place personally, I don't feel comfortable giving advice. Um, I will say I know there is a homeless issue in San Francisco, just like in L.A. So if you watch the safety video, my safety video to L.A., it will give you some ideas for San Francisco, except you don't have to worry about the sun as much. Um, and you'll be surprised how cold it sometimes can get in San Francisco when the, when the wind hits you. And... Chris, I also want to say thank you very much for the super chat. It does make a difference for us. Thank you so much. Uh, Jen reads, travels and more. I like it. Will your Puerto Rico's videos be out soon? I'll be there in a little, little over a week, followed by Boston. So I can tell you when the first two are coming out. They're coming out on Wednesdays. Um, I think I think this Wednesday is it's titled, like, is it safe to go, safety advice for... Uh, Puerto Rico is Puerto Rico safe. Yes, it's safe. You'll be fine. It's fantastic. Um, and then I have a Don'ts of Rincon that's coming out the next Wednesday. Um, I'm currently editing the Don'ts of Puerto Rico and the Don'ts of San Juan. So those will be coming out later in the summer. Yeah. So May 4th will be the safety advice for visiting Puerto Rico. Basically, um, it's you got to watch out for the sun because people get really burned. They don't realize it because they're hiking. Um, also, El Yunque, the, na the national forest there, if you go hiking there, do not go off the do not go off the bass because that can be dangerous. Yeah. So there's some stuff there. Ronnie Dove in the house. Good to see you. Wax Meister up in Chicago. Nice to see you as well. Thank you for hopping on. A B, good to have you in the house. Thank you very much for the super chat. Name three US cities you would live in. Three US cities I would live in. Savannah, New York, and San Antonio. Those are three ones I would definitely, definitely get. Paul Carl Lucas. Now, there's a good question. What foreign liquor do you wish you could buy in the U.S. but can't? Hmm. Verão. Verão is a Portuguese liquor. I want to say it's in the... It's like a... It's not a creamy... It's not like a Bailey's or something like that, but it's it's in that direction. Um, and what was cool is when we were in Portugal, we'd warm it up. If you had like a stuffy nose, you didn't feel well, it'd be like one of those things grandma gives you. And I, I asked our local liquor store and our other, the other local liquor store, like, could you get it for us? And they, they're like, we can't get it. So I know the next time I go to Portugal, I'm going to grab a couple bottles to bring back. Well, depends how many people I have with me. If there's four of us, I can bring four bottles back. It was just me. I can only bring one bottle back. Um, but but I'll would be one for sure. It's funny. Um, like I started going to Italy a lot 
I don't know, it's almost 20 years ago now. And my friends always drank those spritz Aperol. And I used to buy the bottles of Aperol and bring it back because you didn't have it anywhere in the U.S. Now you can get ever Like my local CVS in the little town I live in has Aperol there. I'm like, oh, we have to move here. They have it. So thank you very much for the super chat, Paul. And here's to hoping I can find some Barao one day. So, hey, Archie in Warsaw. Nice. I'm hoping to get to Poland next year. Next year is the, the Poland one. Oh, I'm about to save up for a long week-long trip in Finland. Think London and New York prices, and you'll be fine. That would be my best way to put it. Oh, so here you're going to Vancouver. Nice. Whiskey time. I love it. Whiskey time in Austin. About Tuscany or Southern Italy. I think Tuscany has more punch per capita uh, than Southern Italy. Uh, but Southern Italy has, I mean, I'm a, don't tell anyone I said better food, but like Southern Italy is more like the really the food part and then North is more, Tuscany is more the art part. So that would be there. I like them both. So his name is Mark, Mark Walters. Yes, it is. Don't worry. Don't worry. I've been called lots of things in my life. It's me. Kobe Ta, thank you very much for the Super Chat. Moving from California to South Carolina and trading Cali Big Island for U.S. Virgin Island for getaways. What are the differences between the two for travelers to note? Uh, so basically, U.S. Virgin Island is actually more expensive than Cali and the Big Island. Um, you have less flights. The flights to the U.S. Virgin Islands for the distance you go is probably going to be a bit more than your usual uh, flights to Hawaii, especially if you're in California. You could actually get some decent deals to Hawaii. Um yeah, for me, the U.S. Virgin Islands, it's more the, the the less number of flights is probably the, the toughest part for it. But you can get there. Make sure you're looking at what days to go because sometimes, like, I know it's the weekend getaways. You might want to leave, like, on a Thursday instead of a Friday because you can really see the prices jump up. So uh, have a heads up for that one. But they're both fantastic. You can't go wrong. Let's see. I've never been to Sh – Darren, I've never been to Shipwreck Island. I didn't hear – I didn't see what Lincoln – Oh, that's awesome. Lincoln Abraham wanted to share good news. $4,000 scholarship pay for a semester abroad in the UK. Congratulations. I'm always happy to see students who get to study abroad, especially now study abroad is fully back and forth so students can go abroad. I love seeing that. That is awesome. Um, okay, so Janet, not summer, but I'm leaving for Duck, North Carolina in the morning. I've been going to the Outer Banks for the past 30 years, though. So hard to find something new to do. Yeah, well... It's sometimes, but that's it. Sometimes you just have these wonderful places you want to go back again and again. That's why, like this summer, like since we've been not being able to go to Europe for the last couple of years, this summer is like we're going to go see friends. So like it is, we're going to Barcelona, see my buddy Dave and Marie. We're going to Italy for the wedding. Where Nando is, you got to figure out how to get to net. You know, it's it's one of those things. So I understand. Solo Road, thank you very much for the super chat. <laughs> it's well world. I'm just like, hey, it's all of our worlds. We all get to enjoy it. Jay Williams, thank you very much for the super chat as well. Have I been to Tunisia? Any tips to book for the summer? Honestly, I love Tunisia, but I was there. I mean, it's, it's been 20 years ago. I mean, it's been a long time since I was there. But the people were so hospitable. Oh, my goodness. Like, take us into the mosque, show us around, explain the stuff. Go to El Gem when you're there. It's an Coliseum you can walk through and stuff. That's really cool. I really like Tunisia. Like, but the Arab Springs have, I don't know how things are now with, with everything, but I, I would go back to Tunisia. I really, really enjoyed it. So that is really cool. You have a fun time. I'm very happy that you're going. That's cool. I have not been to Naples, Florida, though my sister-in-law used to run a hotel in Naples, Florida. So there is that. Kelly, you're our time, Mark. Hello, Kelly. I'll be going to Europe and backpacking for the first time next week. Awesome. Also, I'm watching the, the Eurovision. Do you have any tips of places to go close to Milan that are not in the Lake Como? Actually, if you go down to Genoa and Cinque Terre, you got to get reservation for Cinque Terre, though. Uh, you can go down there and see that. Tur Torino, Turin is kind of okay. Bergamo for a day trip is okay. Um, actually, you could get all the way over to Verona for a longer day trip That if you want to go someplace more historic that you know. Uh, so that could be something there. So thanks for the love, Hector. I appreciate it. Let's see. Doo -doo -doo. All right, Tiago, what do you think is better in the cities of Germany, being an hour and 20 from the center and saving or being closer but more expensive? 
this this is actually a really great question, Tiago. Thank you. Um, I always feel it's better, especially if you don't have a lot of time. Think about it. An hour and 20 minutes getting in means an hour and 20 minutes getting out. How much is two over two and a half hours of your time? Plus, you have to figure your connections. So you figure three hours of your day is wasted going back and forth. And if you miss that, if you miss the bus or you miss the metro, how much is that taxi going to be to get there? That's why sometimes like a, a city that's a perfect example of this is Rome. You just want to pay the money. There's cheaper places by Termini Station. Just stay there. But stay in the center because staying out, you're just wasting time. Now, I know if you're a student, you don't have the money. Sometimes you have to do it that way. But I I always will stay in the center versus a cheaper deal out unless it's like a crazy spa or something like that. So that would be that would be my recommendations. Luke is heading to Louisville. Yes, go to the Brown Hotel. It's called the Brown Hotel. Their drinks are incredible. They're, they're, it's like old school, like – old school hotel really cool you go up it's a little bit defined in there and you want to get the hot brown it is a i have a video on it i haven't okay if you go to jocelyn's channel simply jocelyn just look up the eats of louisville and then simply jocelyn you you push to watch it it'll say like eats of louisville but i'll be the one talking that'll tell you what to eat and i have a don'ts of louisville to give you some ideas it's there actually crazy thing louisville has really good cuban food as well so some there So, hey, Wendy. So we plan to stay in Florence as our base for a trip in Italy. Is Cinque Terre worth a day trip overnight? I, I would do overnight. If you're going from Florence, I would probably do overnight. Uh, but you could just keep your hotel in Florence, leave your main bags there, just have like a day pack to spend one night when you're going there. Because there's the five villages you visit and the walks between them get progressively harder or easier, depending on which way you're going. Uh, so look and see that. It's, 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 it's definitely worth doing. So let's see. Oh, by the way, if you send a question, I haven't answered it because it's gone like it's gone blowing by because, you know, what you see and what I see are sometimes different. Um, please don't feel like we're like reposting your question. I'm not trying to ignore people. It's just trying to get to this. That's why we have our Patreon and our members. So we actually do once a month, we'll do a live where I just answer questions and it's more of a slow talking and going more in depth versus me blah, 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 trying to answer as many questions as possible. Uh, Michael, yes, we will be going. Uh, that's for 2023. Uh, 2022 is visit all of our friends we haven't seen for two years and our family we haven't seen for two years. Uh, and so that's going to be, so 2023 right now, we've got uh, Israel, Jordan, Ethiopia, Egypt. Kenya is probably there as well. And then we'll be in Greece for family and then Southeast Europe. And then we've got uh, Central America, we're going to get Honduras and a couple things in the Caribbean. That's what I know for like the first part, like the first half of the year. The second half, 2023, there's still a lot of time. So all kinds of cool stuff coming. Hey, Adam, thank you very much. To Adam Tenhouse, thank you very much. Thank you for all these chats, Mark. Great areas to visit in Cincy other than over. For Cincy, I have not been to Cincinnati since I went to like what, is it Worlds of Fun? No, it's not Worlds of Fun. That's in Kansas City. It's Kings Island. Is that what's there? Or is that in Pittsburgh? I can't remember. It's been too long. I'm sorry, Adam. It's been too long since I'm in Cincinnati. I can't know. There's like, was it Joe's, that like crazy store you can go to that has all kinds of crazy stuff from around the world? I feel bad, Adam. I'll figure it out. I'll visit there some of the summer and go film. And then we'll, I'll do my research. Because when I do my research, it's like a town like Kansas City. Where do you go? Tim from Kansas City. Kansas City is a fantastic city. I'm actually, after my experience with Cleveland and Kansas City, I actually have a video I'm prepping cities that people rip on that you really should visit. And those are two cities you really should go see. So, ah, the Helms D, thanks for the fun videos, man. Hey, I'm, I'm glad I can. I appreciate it. I appreciate all your, your, all your support and all of you watching and all kinds of fun stuff. So thank you. Hey, Aaron, it's okay. If I had to choose one town for a day trip from Madrid, which is it? Brigadier. Hush. Toledo, Segovia, Granada. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, Granada, it's unless they have the new fast train line in. But last time I was in Spain, they didn't have the fast train down to Granada from Madrid. If they got the fast fast train, Granada's got the, the Alhambra is incredible. Like, that's you got to go. But I don't know if they have it. So, easy, easiest day trips are Toledo and Segovia. Because even if you miss the bus or the train back, you can still take a taxi back from, from those towns. So, that would be the ones I would probably go for. 
So, all right, Mystic Morty, would you re <laughs> Mystic Morty, would you recommend Iceland, Ireland, or the UK for first time overseas travelers? I think all of them are great, but I think if it's your first time going abroad, I would probably go for Ireland, then the UK, then Iceland, because Iceland, I really feel you need to drive. Like Ireland, you need to drive, but you can still get around public transportation. UK, you're fine with public transportation. But Iceland, to truly get it all, you need to drive on your own to see some of these things. And I think for first-time travel, sometimes it can be a bit daunting, especially if there's like only one-lane bridges that can freak people out. Ireland, the, the culture for tourism there is so good, and they're so welcoming. I think Ireland would be one, then UK, then Iceland. So that, Now, they're all worth going to. Don't get me wrong. You put those as your first, any of them will be fine. But just want to give you a heads up. Hold on, my dog is like, oh, okay, Greg, go. You don't want to be in with me because you don't love me. Go on, because you don't love me. Uh, yeah, he's whining to leave, but then I let him out. He looks back, he's like, oh, you're not going to come with me. I'm like, no, I'm not. That's why we went here together, Greg. Anyway. Nice, Phil B. Hi, Mark. I'll be in the Netherlands in September. Good time to go. School's back in session, so you'll have a lot of museums and sites to yourself. I'll be visiting many cities like Harlem. Awesome. Amsterdam, Ortelo, Delft. Any important tips or suggestions for when I go there? Um, I'd also try to hit up Utrecht when you're there. Don't feel like you have to stay in Amsterdam because you can stay in Harlem or Utrecht or Leiden and then go in for the day. You'll save a buku amount of money on the accommodation and the train ticket's like, you know, five euros. So it's not too bad. So that would be one thing I would say for you. Let's see. Lewis, how's Hollywood's restrictions at the moment? So I was there, I was there in October, September, October last year. Um, and there wasn't really, it was fine. I, I mean, I had to wear a mask in the taxis and things and we went to events, but overall it was, I didn't really have any restriction problems or anything like that. Now it's been eight months since then. So I don't know. Lee, yes, we have Spanish cousins for real. My cousin really is a Spanish count with a castle. Weird stuff. Yes, weird stuff does happen in life. It's like you start throwing axes with people in a random place that your friend's husband designed. It happens, doesn't it, Lee? <laughs> Are there Buckeyes in Chicago? Um, well, you can get the candy Buckeyes, but the Ohio State people, I don't think you're welcome. So let's see. Oh, here we go. Thank you very much, Sam, for the super chat. Planning a week trip, a one week trip to Dublin, Madrid, or Milan, other Italian cities. I want my brother, budget center, to go with us. Which should I propose? I would not do Milan. I would, I, I, I would do for the budget one. I think Madrid would be the best one because if you got a one week trip, you could rent an Airbnb, and then you guys can eat in the hotel, and then you can do a day trip to Segovia and a day trip to Toledo, which are cheap day trips to go to. That's going to be definitely your cheapest option. Dublin's a lot like Ireland is is affordable trip, but Dublin is expensive. Mil Italy can be affordable, but Milan's expensive. So I think it would be Madrid would be the one I, I your brother would go to, um, and because that would be one. And there's lots of museums; they're affordable. And I mean, Spain they don't have the highest uh, per capita income either, so prices are down. And also, there's a law that you have to give a fantastic lunch meal venue a like drink meal and a starter or a dessert for a price that a normal person can afford. And so you can go to really nice restaurants and get good food at lunchtime for a great price. Like that's one, that's the reason why I take students to Madrid because I know it's not going to bust their budget. It's like, yeah, you know, I'm looking where to take students next time. And I'm like, you know, do we go to Denmark or Sweden? I'm like, man, the price is, we got to think about it. So that's why Spain is a good one there. Dan James, if money was not an issue and you aren't living on time, where would you go and what would you do? I'd go to Mars. I'll be honest with you, I would do space travel. But Jocelyn said I can't do it. So I guess I'd do Egypt or Antarctica. So, but like really do have Egypt, really do have Antarctica. Do a donut to North Korea. Yeah, I'd be scared to do that one. KK, hey Mark, hello from Ireland. Hello, hello. Heading to Sardinia and Lisbon. 
Hey, one thing you should know is Sardinia and Lisbon have, so they say, have similar foods because of the sailor nature of those places. So let me know if you you found that. I didn't find it that much, but just the just the codfish was popular. Uh, at the end of May with college friends, is there anything you would recommend checking out? So Lisbon, you're going to go to the Barrio Alto district. And that's where you're going to go out, eat, drink, and make merry. Uh, the beaches. You can go down to Cascais and that's real for like easy beaches, but if you want like the surfing beaches and you get like outdoor party stuff, that's on the other side of the river. Um, let's see. Day trips. Centra is a very easy day trip. Ever is a very day, easy day trip from Lisbon. Uh, Sardinia, I have not been there personally, so therefore I don't feel comfortable making recommendations. So I'm sorry. I can't help you more with that, my friend. <sighs> oh, Granville Island. Yes, that is a good choice. Thank you, Shinji. B. Chris, do you like Vegas? I like going to Vegas with my friends, but I'm not a huge fan of the strip. I like going out, like if you go to Red Rock Canyon or if you're going out to um, Boulder, Colorado, not Boulder, Colorado, Boulder City, uh, Nevada, where you can take, there's a like a bike train thing you can do. That was kind of cool. Um, the hiking and stuff, Valley of Fire, like that stuff. The strip, I, I get, it gets a bit too much for me and I don't gamble. Like if you'll see in some of our Vegas, or did you see me gambling? That's like the only time I gamble because I gamble, lose, and I'm done. Um, but my favorite part of Vegas is actually the food because you get food from all over the world and excellent food from all over the world. So I would, I, I, I do enjoy it for that. Um, so that's one thing. Our friends Tanya and Dave from Turn It Up World, they're big Vegas vloggers. Um, they they know how to have a good time. Like they know everybody in Vegas. So it's like anytime we're going, it's like, oh hey. Tanya, Dave, come on in. So we get, it, it's really, really fun. So Jack Lee, hey, from Hampshire, UK, planning to do the East Coast, the US, any tips? Uh, yeah, if you, I would fly into Boston and you can train it down. You're going to do Boston, New York City, uh, Philadelphia, DC, and you can do that all on the train. And we've got videos for all four. We got down shocks. We got all kinds of stuff, foods for all of them. So, Jack, you'll be, you have a good time when you're there. So, Jocelyn is almost here she is so the app says she is mere minutes away so i'm gonna have to hop off here in about four minutes so i'm gonna try to answer as fast as i can safest place for solo female travelers mm, scandinavia us canada japan um let's see try to see laura says mark the wadi rum desert in jordan is like martian landscapes where the movie the martian was filmed yes because I, I there's a place in in iceland that looks like that too that's why i have a five love and hates of going up to, to mars i filmed it there so i was actually looking at that to film the don'ts of going to mars so yes 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 hey in boston good to see you let's go to Brandon, Florida. Okay. Thank you very much for the super chat. First time travelers to the U Europe, I would say Ireland and the UK. Uh, especially if you're coming from New Jersey, you've got um, you've got a really cheap fast flights too. So it makes it like sometimes it feels faster going to the to like Ireland than it is going to you know California from New York. Top two tips for two days in Vienna. One. Get a hot dog from a stand on the street. They'll put it in like a croissant. They smush it down, put it in, get ketchup and mustard in it, enjoy it. You want to have that. Or a, or a, a queso kleine, which is one with a, a brought with cheese. Also, go to an opera or go to some kind of symphony performance because they're beautiful there. And it's wonderful doing. They have great, great, great performances. And some are free, especially at the churches. So you can do that. That's really nice. Um, pickpockets in Rome. Uh, watch out going in and out of the metro, especially at the Coliseum and getting in on and off of buses. That's the biggest place you're going to do. You're going to see it the most. Uh, New York and Philly are real close to each other. They are. It's so quick and so close. You're fine. Even D.C. from Philly is like two hours on the train. So you're not worried about that. Uh, Bora Bora, Hector, uh, I would love to go there. Uh, but it's beyond what we can do right now. Uh, let's see. Christina, I've seen your question a few times. I don't know which one I would pick. I'm sorry. Day trip from London in October. I would probably go to Cambridge because the students will be in session. Students will be in session, so it's kind of cool to go there. And it's not that cold yet either, so you can maybe, I don't know, punting will still be going on when you're getting little boats going down the, the river, but there's some stuff there. Um, 
Ooh, Dolomites in North Italy in October. Bring layers. You'll be surprised how cool it will get on your hike. Um, also, however long people say it's going to take to drive to get anywhere, give yourself extra time because there's lots of places to stop along the way and the traffic as well. Hey, Stuart Ross, good to see you, my friend. At least not at 3 o'clock in the morning we're on here. Street food you love. When I taught in China, I ate street food all the time. I loved it. I did get tummy problems sometimes. Jobs got mad at me, but I didn't care because it was so amazing. Okay, so we have that. Underrated travel destination. Rwanda in, in Africa is incredible. Slovenia in Europe is incredible. Kansas City in the U.S. is incredible. So Nicaragua, love it. Go to uh, Granada, Nicaragua. Fantastic place to do, that are just great to see. Anyway, Jocelyn, according to this, is pulling into our neighborhood right now. So I just want to hop on for a little bit to wish you all fantastic travels this summer. Thank you to everyone that's been on here. Give a like, give all kinds of stuff. I'm going to try to do some more of these lives spontaneously. Uh, throughout the summer, just and through the spring to get people ready for summer travel. So uh, do, uh, do if you see us on, pop on, send questions. And I just want to say thank you for all your support and happy travels to you all. And I got to see my wife. I haven't seen her for two weeks and she'll beat my butt if I'm not at the door when she comes in. Probably should make her a drink too. <laughs> and I love you all. Have a fantastic weekend. Thank you for everything, everybody. Bye.